The stretch command will stretch objects that are crossed by a crossing window selection set, a polygon window selection set, or by using grip selection. I can activate stretch from the uh, tool panel. I can type in stretch or use its keyboard alias S. But the most common way that stretch is applied is when I click on an object and its grip slide up and then I choose an endpoint for example, click on that to become a hot grip. You'll notice that down here on the command line that automatically activates by default the stretch command, which allows me to stretch the line two different ways. You notice that it's telling me now the displacement from that endpoint in the direction that I'm moving, and it also tells me the total length of the line. So if I wanted to increase the length of this line and I am on a polar tracking uh, angle, uh, I could say 0.5 and that will increase the length of the line. I could also click on the line, click on an endpoint, and if I use the tab, I can tab over to the total length of the line and also the angle. And these can be input as part of my stretch command. So if I wanted to change the length of this line to 2, and I want to change the angle to 90, I could do that while using my grip selection and stretch command. Now if I click on a line segment like this and instead of using an endpoint as a hot grip, I activate the center grip, you'll notice that instead of stretching the line, it will move the line. So in this case, I'm on a polar tracking angle here and I'm going to say 2 and it moves the line 2 inches. I can also use grips to stretch objects like rectangles, polygons, or arcs. Let's look at this rectangle for example. This is a, a polyline. When I click on it, you see its grips light up. If I were to click on this corner and make that its base point or a hot grip, you notice that I can stretch that two adjacent lines to that corner. If I, I can click the mouse to choose that or I could have input uh, a specific distance. Now, I can stretch an object by choosing more than one grip. To do that, I hold the shift button down and click on the two grips that I want to use or more, and then I'm going to click on the base point. Now you'll notice that the line between the two uh, selected grips will be moved, while the line adjacent to that will be stretched. In this case, I could input 1 from the keyboard, and I've increased the size of my rectangle by 1. In a similar manner, I can work with a polygon. If I were to click on my polygon, activate the grips, click on one point, and start to pull, the two adjacent lines are stretched. If I click on this polygon, and then hold down the shift button before I start selecting so that I can select multiple grips, then click on the base point and start to stretch. The lines between the selected grips are moved while the lines adjacent to those are stretched. I can also use grip selection and stretch with arc segments. If I click on this arc segment, so the grips slide up, and then I click on this end point grip to make that a hot grip, you'll notice that as I stretch that endpoint, the arc will still go through the two unselected grip points. So I could even snap this to uh, an object using a, an endpoint snap here, and the resulting arc will still pass through those first two grip points uh, on the original arc segment. Now I'm going to click on this arc segment again, and this time I'm going to hold down the shift and I'm going to select the two endpoints, and then I'll choose this end point as a base point. And now as I start to stretch this, you'll notice that my arc is stretched, but it stays consistent with that one unselected grip point as passing through the arc. So now if I come down here and snap the end to this end point, 
The only thing that remains of my old arc is the fact that it still passed through this same point. I can use a stretch with grip selection on circles and ellipses. If I click on this circle, the hover grip tells me that its current radius is 0.5. If I click on this grip to make it a hot grip, I can change the radius by entering from the keyboard and stretch the circle. So I'm going to enter 1, and now I can see that the circle has been stretched to a radius of 1. When I click on the center grip on a circle or an ellipse, my stretch becomes a move. So I'm actually displacing the location. To stretch an ellipse, First I'll click to activate the grips. Using a hover grip I see that my current axis is 1 on the horizontal and 5 on the vertical. I'm going to click on this axis and I can stretch by entering from the keyboard. I'm going to change this to uh, 0.75. My horizontal axis, I'll click on that grip and I'm going to change this to 1.5 and the center grip on my ellipse, if I click on that, I can displace the location or, uh, or move my ellipse. Let's look at the application of the stretch command and the crossing window necessary uh, to select the parts that will be stretched. I'm going to activate my stretch command and I have to use a crossing window to, for my selection set. That means that I have to click and be moving from right to left when I make the selection. In this case, I want to lengthen this wrench, but I want to leave this square hole in its current location, but stretch the rest of it. It needs to be an inch longer. So I would click and start pulling a crossing window, and a crossing window is green and everything that's inside the crossing window will be moved during the stretch uh, command. The edges that cross the crossing window will be stretched. So I'm going to click here and now I'm done selecting objects. I'm going to select a base point and you'll notice that everything inside the window is just being moved. It's not stretching. Just those two lines that were on the edge of the crossing window are being stretched. I'm going to enter a uh, direct distance entry of 1 and now I've stretched this wrench but I've left this hole in the same location. If I wanted the uh, square hole to move with it I would get a stretch command. I would pull a crossing window and include that square hole inside the crossing window. Pick a base point and one. And now I can stretch that, but that object is moved along with the stretch operation. Now stretch is often used in architectural drawings to make edits to floor plans and other areas. And my crossing window does not necessarily neatly bring in all of the points that I want to use. In this case I need to stretch this building an additional five feet, but I want this window to remain in its current location and I want this window to remain in its current location. So that means that this window has to move with a stretch and this one won't. To accomplish this I'll use my stretch command and instead of a crossing window I need a crossing polygon. So I'll CP for crossing polygon and enter. I'll click once to start start point for my polygon. I'll click again. I'm going to bring my polygon across so you can see that everything that's enclosed inside the crossing polygon will be moved and the edges, uh, the lines that cross the edges will be stretched. So I'm going to right click and say enter. I need to end my select and get a base point and then I'm going to stretch five feet and this uh, window has remained in its current location in its distance from the corner this one's remained in its current location 
distance from this corner. 